Davis and I are both fans of Reddit. Uh, probably Davis more than I at this point. I, I try to just stay off of all social media, particularly in season. But I, if there's a social media that I always find myself coming back to, it is Reddit. I just think it's just an incredible place um, full of just like original content that just always has me laughing and interested in all sorts of stuff. It's the best. Um, so as a result, we want to incorporate an NBA Reddit question of the day. There's just so much rich content. So much. Both comical, but also really insightful. Yes. So I think we'll try to pull a little bit of both. Yeah, that that's the goal um, to kind of weave in and out of you know some lighthearted stuff, some more serious stuff. Um, but we also really want to... The attempt is to galvanize that community because we know it's a strong community. Yeah, give us your best um, questions. You know, give us give us the best content you got. We want you to know that we're certainly watching. <laughs> um, no pressure, but uh, we we love what we've seen uh, with some of the questions that get posted on there. So, with that being said, I think Davis has the NBA Reddit question of the day for us. True, our first ever, first ever, and we're keeping it relatively conservative here with the first question because i Fair. think it's it's a topic we wanted to touch on anyway yeah and we got to ease into it as e well exactly yeah. right but it's it, it comes from our guy mike actually technically it's zero underscore zero underscore mike shout out to zero underscore zero underscore mike and he asks and and what's interesting is he's asking this to the reddit community right but i'm obviously asking it to you who Correct. has a first-hand experience of this what do you like better the bubble or empty arenas Mike, this is a good one. Um, it's actually a question I've, I've gotten quite a bit. Uh, not that you were asking me directly, but I'm, I'm now answering it as if you were. Personally, I much prefer the bubble, uh, mostly because those venues were set up for no fans. They had the virtual fans on the outside. They had the tight backdrops. They had the small seating area seating for you know close family once we got deep into the playoffs. Um, and now we've had to adjust to playing in these 18, 20,000 person arenas. And they're these you know large cavernous arenas and they're just empty. And that is like, I'll never forget our first exhibition game or preseason game. It was just this eerie feeling of just being in this massive place and it just being dead quiet to the point where you could like hear people on the bench speaking when you're on the opposite end of the floor. It's just been, that's been definitely been an adjustment. Um, and then you go and play like we had a preseason game in Tampa Bay uh, with the Tampa Bay Raptors or our first game of the season was in Orlando with the Magic and they have some fans. I think they had like 3,000 or 4,000. And it legitimately felt like there were 40,000 people in there because we were just at that point so used to having nobody that the adjustment of having anybody felt so strange. Does it allow you to hear more easily trash talk from not just opposing players, but fans? So in that setting, yes, there was a really funny interaction Um you know, in, in Tampa Bay, I feel bad for the Raptors because those aren't actually their real fans. You know, they're right. they're f people from Florida, Tampa Bay area. So when we went to play there, there were probably more Heat fans than there were Raptor fans. And there was a, a foul or something, and one of our guys is on the line, and I'm outside the, the three-point line with Fred Van Fleet, and there's a fan in the crowd who's complaining about the call. And at so, some point he calls out Fred. I don't remember exactly what in what capacity. And Fred just turns around and yells in the entire place. Here's him. Shut up and put on your mask. <laughs> and it was just this, it was like dead silent. And everybody was just like, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like a perfect example of just how weird this year has been in that you could, everybody could hear it. It was so clear in what was happening. And it, it just like summed up at least what that preseason had been like in a nutshell. Yeah. Miami has now started to let some fans to the arena. So I've had the privilege of going to a couple of games. They are playing music throughout pretty much the entire thing. So it's changed now where like I'm yelling to people who are, who I'm at the game with who are sitting next to me because what they've done in Miami is correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like every player has their own section essentially. Yeah. So you can invite people from a household 
yeah, it's, to come it's, to a game. It's close friends and family. Um, Davis is obviously a, a close friend of mine, so Davis is able to come and, and basically, like you said, you have an entire section to yourself. Uh, so in that saying, like we, there's no fan noise for us. We don't hear you. Right. They pump in some crowd noise, uh, but still, it's just the visual. Also, the visual component of looking around an eighteen thousand person arena and seeing like. I don't know, 150 people. Not even. I. It's so few that I counted. I hand counted the other night. There were 63 fans in the stands. Yeah, that is. You hand counted. I clearly the game was not. I don't have 63 fingers, but yeah, yeah. You, you get the idea. Yeah. I. Uh, the other thing I noticed is it's so cold in there. Yeah. There's a lot of body heat that's lacking. I don't know if that's something you feel on the court. I doubt it because you guys are running around. But for that us is- in the stands, it's pretty cold. That's an interesting take. We might need to consult a uh, scientist on, on that take. Uh, I don't know if that's valid. Anyways, that's our, our NBA Reddit question of the day. 